Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today, in this video, I would like to read an article entitled United States Maritime Attachment and Arrest. Maritime attachment and vessel arrest are very useful tools for maritime claimants. The successful use of Rule B and Rule C of the Federal Rules of Civil Procedure can provide prejudgment security and potential satisfaction for maritime claims and judgments. The underlying rights and procedures are in many respects unique, unique to maritime law and they can vary from district to district. Plaintiffs should be familiar with the local rules and consider their exposure to counterclaims and corresponding counter security before commencing attachment or arrest proceedings. In turn, defendant of those claimant and interest in any attach on the arrested property should consider making a restricted appearance, posting security, and requesting an emergency hearing. So this article briefly discuss maritime attachment and arrest under U.S. Maritime Rule. Rule B. Attachment Maritime attachment is an ancient remedy that predates not only the federal rules of civil procedure, but also formations of the United States. It provides a means to obtain prejudgment security and jurisdiction for claims against an otherwise absent defendant and to assure satisfaction of judgment if the underlying claims are ultimately successful. These procedures are important to the fundamentally transient maritime industry because without them, defendant their ships and their fund could easily evade the enforcement of substantive right of admiralty law. Winter Storm Shipping Limited VTPI 198 V sub second 385-387 Rule B of the Supplement Rules for, for certain admiralty and maritime claims provide in pertinent part 1. In and personal actions a if a defendant is not found within the district when a verified complaint praying for attachment and the affidavit required by process to attach the defendant tangible or intangible personal property <coughs> up to the amount should for in the hands of garnishes name in the process Pay the plaintiff. Be the plaintiff of the plaintiff. Attorney must sign the file with the complaint and affidavit stating that to the affiant's knowledge or or on information and belief, the defendant cannot be found within the district. The court must review the complaint and affidavit, and if it's up, it's the conditions of this rule be appear to exist. Enter an order so stating an authorizing process of attachment and garnishment. The clerk may issue supplemental process enforcing the court's order upon applications with the further court order. In short, an attachment should issue if the plaintiff show that one, he has a valid prima facie admiralty claim against the defendant. 2. The defendant cannot be found within the district. 3. The defendant property may be found within the district. And 4. There is no statutory or maritime rule bar to the attachment. Aqua Stolly Shipping Limited v. Gardner Smith Usually a court initial review of the complaint and entry of an order of attachment and garnishment in conducted ex parte, for example, with a prior notice to or participations of the defendant. The verified complaint must allege both the maritime claims and prima facie claim. They are related but separate concepts. Whether a plaintiff alleges a maritime claim is a procedural question governed 
a U.S. maritime law. But whether plaintiff allege a prima facie claim is a substantive question governed by the law that applies to the claim, potentially foreign law. The first, pro the first problem of the analysis, maritime claim is complicated by quirks of U.S. maritime law. For example, a ship mortgage contract is a maritime contract, and breach of a ship's mortgage contract would give rise to a maritime claim. In contrast, a shipbuilding contract is not a maritime contract, and breach of a shipbuilding contract would not give rise to maritime claim. The verified complaint must be supported by an affidavit showing the defendant cannot be found in the district. In simple term, this means that the defendant is not physically located when the attachment is being sold, but it also means among other things, that the defendant does not have continuous or systematic contacts within the district that would make it subject to the court general personal jurisdiction. The supporting affidavit would frequently declare that the plaintiff searched the, inten the internet and phone book, and there is could not find any contact information for the defendant within the district. However, some courts will nonetheless deny or vacate a maritime attachment if the defendant can be found within a convenient adjacent jurisdiction. The applicability of these equitable rules varies from district to district. When the plaintiff establishes rule based prerequisites, a court must enter an order authorizing process of attachment and garnishment. The clerk of the court then issue a writ of maritime attachment and garnishment. Issues concerning when service of process is effective is effective or frequently resolved by court orders permitting alternative service like, for example, daily electronic service. All of the defendant tangible and intangible property is subject to an attachment and garnishment including its non-maritime property. This includes a defendant vessel cargo and bankers as well as defendant bank account and debt owed by the party to the defendant. It is example freight or hire. Rule E defending a maritime attachment. A successful maritime attachment creates so-called quasi interim jurisdiction and forces a defendant to make a difficult choice appear to defend the attached the attach property or risk to uncontested use of the attached property to satisfy a judgment or award. Rule E offers the defendant some, pre some protections. These same rules apply in the context of rule C vessel arrest discussed below. For example, a defendant not otherwise subject to the court personal jurisdiction does not have to make a general appearance, which would fully expose it to liability on, for example, additional related claims. Rather, a defendant may make a restricted appearance without submitting to the court's personal jurisdiction, in which case is exposed is limited only to the value of the attached property. Furthermore, Rule E entitles the defendant to an emergency hearing at which the plaintiff has the burden to prove why the attachment should not be vacated. Notably, Rule E also permits a defendant to post security to stay the executions of a writ of attachment and garnishment or to, act, or to act as a substitute to evade the release of seized property from the attachment and garnishment. These options is useful to defendant when seizure are causing consequ consequential damages. The form and amount of security may be negotiated by the parties or ordered by the court. Security may include uh, in include cost and interest at 6% annum and attorney fees it provides for the agreement. So the time is up and the article will be continued to read on the next video. So bye bye and don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Bye!